In this question, we are going to look at the gravitational field strength of Earth. Okay, so it starts off by asking us to define gravitational field strength. So whenever you see the word field strength, it's not the same definition as gravitational field, okay? So whenever it's field strength, it's always force per unit something. Gravity will be force per unit mass. Electric force per unit charge. Magnetic force per unit length of a current carrying one ampere, blah, 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 that one later. Lah, okay, so basically we always start off the sentence whenever you see field strength for now as force per unit. So this is gravitational. Okay, I'm going to put gravitational in as well. So this is the gravitational force per unit mass because we are looking for the attraction about how strong the field is. So the stronger the field, the more force will act on a unit mass. Okay. So example for Earth, the gravitational field strength is 9.81 Newton per kilogram. So to know how much your weight is or how much gravity, how much force gravity is acting on you, I'll just multiply your mass by 9.81. Okay. Because it's 9.81 for every kilogram. Okay, so let's move on. Part B. Explain why for changes in vertical positions of a point mass near the Earth's surface, okay, near the Earth's surface, so probably a few hundred to thousand meters, the gravitational field strength may be considered to be constant. Okay, when it's near to the Earth's surface, I don't forget the Earth's radius is really big. So I'm going to write down here, radius of Earth is 6400 km. So if you're 1, 2 km above the Earth's surface, it's nothing. Cruising altitude for commercial flights are around 8 km above the ground. Also nothing. Okay. 6,408, not so much. Okay. So when it comes to gravitational field, there are two ways to do this. You can either use your words or you can use equation. Okay. So the first thing I will say is that near the Earth's surface, The changes in height, uh, yeah, you throw a ball up for 3 meter, 2 meter, is nothing. Change, changes in height is much less than the radius of Earth. You must mention much less. If you want to hammer it in, you can also just put a uh, very much lesser than the radius of the earth but you must at least have very much or much lesser to show that we are not talking about less we're talking about very very small so basically what we're saying is that h is very very small compared to radius of earth so if you're a physics student and you like equation second point you can say hence g above the earth okay so i'm going to draw planet earth right now Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so here to here is my RE. Again, not really drawn to scale, obviously. And maybe here is H. Okay. I had to draw it further away so you can see the difference. Lah. Okay. So if I want to find the value of G here, G, I must take the whole radius from the center, which is RE plus H. Okay. So this G will be equal to Re plus H square. Okay, this is Gm. Equation that I'm using is gravitational field strength is Gm over R square. But now my R, this R, is Re plus H because you are H above near the Earth's surface. So then I will just write here where H is distance distances close to earth's surface okay h i put one so i must define okay so since h is much lesser than re then i can say re plus h will be more or less equal to re 
correct? So because of this, G will now go back to GM over RE, which is constant. Okay, so what the st statement that we are looking for is, number one, the changes in height is very much less than the radius of Earth. One mark. And then you write out this equation, you explain that RE plus H is more or less equal to RE, and then you conclude that they are constant, this is one mark. All right, and just for phrasing, this one mark is M1. Meaning if you don't get the first mark, you will not get the second mark, A1. Okay, M1 here, A1 here. Last one. Uh, another method, if let's say you like, can I not use the equation? Can. If you don't use the equation, you can talk about this drawing that you probably already watched in the lecture. Okay. So if you look at this drawing, right, you will notice if we zoom out on planet Earth, the uh, gravitational field is radial. So it's going to be traveling along the surface of, I mean, along the radius of the planet. So this is radial field. Normally, this explanation is 3 marks 1, uh, but I don't know why this year 2 marks. Okay, low. So, G field is radial field. Okay? All the lines travel along the radius. But if I zoom in, and I zoom in some more, it will look almost parallel to each other. That's how we know it is constant. So, another way you can write is, and the way you know you zoom in, zoom in, and you'll get constant, right, is because the radius is very big compared to this one. So the first mark is still the same. Okay, so or another explanation would be one mark or M1. Actually, this M1 should contain two points. Lah. Okay, number one, uh, gravitational field is radial. Okay, number two, the close to Earth's surface RE is much greater than H. Okay, but mark scheme award marks for the second one. They are not very consistent, right? The whole thing. Because now you are talking about the shape of the field. You're not using equation. So basically, we need to provide a justification why G is constant. Okay, for the first method of justifying it, I use equation. I say this H very small, okay? So no matter how you change the H, it wouldn't really affect the RE. So your G will stay the same. That is my explanation by using equation as a proof. If I say you don't want to use equation as a proof, then you can use drawing. You can say gravitational field is radial. Ma. And close to the Earth's surface, the radius of the Earth is much bigger than heights that are close to the Earth's surface. So because of this, your answer one, you can say that the field lines are more or less parallel. Okay, so you could say the field lines are almost parallel. Almost parallel field lines, this one, shows uniform field. Hence, gravitational field is uniform. So like I said, normally this explanation is 3 marks, but this one is 2 lah for some reason. Maybe they couldn't find another place to give you that one more mark. So write all 3 things. Okay, Say that number 1, starting off first, describe the gravitational field. It is radial. And because it's radial, when it's close to the Earth's surface, the radius of the Earth is very, 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 very big compared to the heights that are close to the surface. Because of this, when we zoom in and zoom in, when we zoom in, we'll get almost parallel lines. And almost parallel field lines shows us that the gravitational field is uniform. Okay, so two alternative explanations. Talk about the gravitational field lines or talk about equation and use approximation. Up to you. Up to your comfort. Okay, last one. Part C. The orbit of the Earth about the Sun is approximately circular. Okay, it better be circular because if not, it ain't in the syllabus. Okay, thankfully, this is orbit, no, from the surface of the Earth nonsense. So this is R. Period of the orbit is T. Ooh. Determine M, the mass of the Sun. Hiya, explain your work. Okay, first thing I want to do is I'm going to scroll down and see the wow, five marks. Five. Okay, 
So if it's five, then I better make sure I show all my working beautiful and perfect. Okay, so we're going to start off with an idea. Whenever I see a circular orbit, I think of centripetal force. So I'm going to start off with number one, or step one, or whatever you want to call it. You can even label here for you to check or for the examiner to follow. Number one, um, gravitational force provides the necessary centripetal force. So gravitational force provides centripetal force. Show sure, got one, this one. Okay, number two. I'm going to write the equation. Fg is equal to... Miss, can I not write one and just write this equation? Most of the time, physics can. But I like to play it safe, so I'm going to write out full sentences. This is gmm over r square is equal to... I have period, so once again, I will use mr omega square. We have been here before. We have been here many times. Okay, so let us uh, contextualize again. Now, instead of Earth and a uh, satellite, we're using Earth and the Sun. Our Sun. Or we call it Sol. Okay, I'll call it Sun. S-O-L. This is just like astronomy nerd talk. Okay, our, our blue, blue planet Earth is here. Okay. And now, Earth is the one that is moving in a circle. Means the Moon, eh? the moon is moving around the Earth and today we are not talking about the Moon. The moon is here and it's doing its own thing. We don't care about the moon. We care about the earth now. Okay. So the earth is going to 365 days around the sun. And the radius of the circular orbit is your 1.5 times 10 to the power of 8 km. Okay. So that's why this M is earth. And this M is sun which means the mass of the Earth and mass of the Earth can cancel. I'm looking for mass of the Sun, so I'm going to rearrange. I'll get M is equal to R cube omega square over G. Yes. Okay, so I know omega is 2 pi over T. So this will be R cube 4 pi square over G T square. Okay, because omega is 2 pi over t, the t square I can bring down and divide. All right, now I can substitute already. I have the radius 1.5 times 10 to the power of 8 times 10 to the power of 3 because of km. Okay, then times 4 pi square. Wow, don't forget the power 3. Uh. Yes, good job. Okay, 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. T square, uh, 365 days. Have to convert. Uh. Yeah, law, you see right beside the VIP, gravitational constant, you don't want to convert. Where can? So 365 times, 365 days, one day, 24 hours, one hour, 3,600 seconds. Don't forget the square. You've got the cube here. You better make sure you cube here. You have the square here. You better make sure you square here. And of course, there's another square here. Lah, but you get the point. Okay, we are ready, ladies and gentlemen, to put all of this in our calculating machine. Let me pull up our friend Casio, the calculator. You also press together, though. All right, let's go. Okay, so this 10 to the power of 3 is converting km to meter. So 10 to the power of 11, okay, 8 plus 3 is 11. Power 3 times 4 times pi square divided by 6, 7, e negative 11 divided by 3, 6, 5 times 2, 4 times 3, 6, oh, oh, bloop, square. Ta-da! Okay, 2.00 times 10 to the power of 30. Or 2.0 times 10 to the power of 30 kg. This is good. This is sun mass. Okay, the mass of the sun is around 10 to the power of 30. If you don't get somewhere there, something is wrong. Didn't convert. Didn't square. Somewhere, somewhere, don't know where, something is wrong. La. You go check. La. Okay, where are the five marks? Mm. B1 is here. 
did you write out a statement like this? Uh, C1 is here. So C1 is important calculation. Please make sure you show. If you don't show, it's up to the discretion of the examiner. Mostly, they will give you marks. Lah, okay. So C1 is the calculation mark. But it's a very good habit to show. Okay, and then the other mark is when you substitute omega correctly. So I see omega, our good friend omega. Omega is 2 pi over t. I see this conversion to second, you get one mark. Okay, and then the remaining substitution or the other substitution, you will get another mark. Okay, or the remaining substitution is another mark. One, two, three, four. Okay, and the final answer is one mark. There we go, five marks. So uh, it's very common for people to lose the first mark. Lah. It's debatable whether the first mark is this sentence or this statement. But if it makes you happy, I will show you the mark scheme now, you will see that they also type a sentence. So you should write a sentence. Okay, can not that long all right okay so that's it for this short and sweet question okay mainly i chose this question to tell you or to teach you how to explain why the gravitational field is constant either using equation and approximation or using the idea of a radial field we zoom in zoom in zoom in and we get uniform field because the gravitational lines look parallel okay that's it for this question i will see you in the next one Bye bye